What's up, ladies and gentlemen, it's Ryan here, and I want to update you guys on the progress that I've made on my thumb gen project. So first of all, on the left side, I added a little bit of flair with this uh, purple gradient. It just looks a little bit prettier than it did before. But most importantly, I added the ability to extract screenshots from a YouTube video. So previously, you could drag an image here and it would update all of these backgrounds however in real life that's not super convenient you still got to find the image right what if you already have a video and it's posted and you just want to quickly make a thumbnail for it i have a video here where i'm not too happy about the thumbnail so let's update this so i'm going to open up this video go to share i'm going to copy that url so i'm going to go to thumbgen paste this youtube video url and click grab snapshots now it is gonna take about a minute or two for it to pull down the image and process it on all that. But once it's done, so it'll pop up like this. And what it did is it pulled screenshots from every five seconds or so in that video. And I can pick one of these to use as a background now. Let's say, I kinda like this one here. I'm gonna choose this one. So now that's the new background. And I'll say failed. And cool. And I think I'm gonna choose this one. This looks pretty cool. Open it up. And here we are. Now I have a new thumbnail generated from my own video. And I didn't have to go in and manually capture a screenshot and all that jazz. So a big part of building a product is eating your own dog food, right? So if I'm creating a YouTube thumbnail generator and I'm not using it for my own videos, it's a little ironic. So I do want to keep improving this thing to the point that I feel comfortable using it myself. And I would say it's close. It's maybe not quite there, but it's getting closer. I want to add some nice hover effects. There's just some slight tweaks to the UI that I want to do to make it a better experience. So to make all of this stuff faster, what I ended up doing is creating a memory cache. If we take a look at one of these images, you can see that this is 3840-2160. Um, this one is 5184 by 3456. So th these are some giant images. And this is why it was taking so long to process it. Now you might be thinking, Ryan, just downsize the image before you upload it to the server. Well, I don't wanna have to do that. Like to me, a big part of the convenience of this whole system is that it will automatically do that stuff for me. So I have three different namespaces for caching. One is user uploads. One is for the fonts cache, and then the other one is the images cache, which is when images are resized, right? I wanna cache the resized version of that image so that later on, I don't even have to process the original image. So yeah, caching is one of those things where it starts off really simple and then it starts to get exponentially more complex. For example, you wanna put a cap on how much stuff you cache, because if I just cache everything and I never clear the cache, then I'm gonna run out of memory very quickly. So I basically have this thing where if the cache is full, then it's going to return. It's not going to allow me to put more data into the cache. And then I have this thing where it'll delete all of the expired entries, which is basically the cleanup of the cache. So what happens here is when the memory cache is initially created, I can specify the maximum size and all that, but it has this infinite loop running in the background and it's looping every one second and it'll delete any expired keys. And this is what helps to clean up the cache and make sure that we don't run out of memory. So here I've got some logs from the blob service that's running in production. And I wanna show exactly what happens with the cache and how it gets cleaned up. And it's gonna fetch some stuff from the cache. We can see it's actually fetching the resized version of these images. So if it already has the resized version of the image, then I don't have to resize it afterwards. So here we can see the cache got cleaned up a little bit. Um, it deleted some entries and it's continuing to delete the entries. And you can see that the amount of space used is just decreasing and decreasing as these entries are removed. Um, once again, caching is simple at first, but it very quickly gets complicated and having different namespaces for different caches. But hey, it's a fun project and I'm running into some interesting fun challenges. So if you liked the video, please like and subscribe and support a little YouTuber like myself. And thank you for watching.